It's good to have you here again in Basic Science and Technology. My name is Gogo Ella Thompson, and our theme for today is Basic Computer Operations and Concepts. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the topic Units of Storage. Here's a fun fact. We all know that one of the characteristics of the computer is that it stores data and information. But have you ever wondered what it stores it as? Here are some hints bits and bytes. In this lesson, we're going to learn a lot about the different units of computer storage and what they mean. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to do a few things. First, you should be able to state the various units of storage and their values. Next, you should be able to distinguish between kilobyte, megabyte, and gigabytes. And then you should be able to convert from one unit to another. And finally, you should be able to differentiate between kilometer, kilogram, and kilobyte. So let's begin. Now take a look at your environment. I'm sure you can see certain items kept in a place where it is safe and where it will be easy to collect them for use. Wherever an item is kept for safety and future use, it's called a storage. So your bag holds your books, it can be considered as a storage. But I have two good examples here, two bottles of Coke. These bottles are used to store the drink. Now you can see they are of different sizes. And these different sizes have labels called units. This small one is labeled 30 CL, which stands for 30 centiliters. And the bigger one is labeled 1.5 L, which stands for 1.5 liters. Now, the CL and the L are units of measurement for liquids. Units help us to know the amount of a thing that can be stored in a storage material. So, the unit of any storage material tells us the quantity of the item it can contain. For the CL and liter, we know they are units for liquids. So when it comes to the computer, what does the computer store data and information as? Let's find out. One of the basic characteristics of the computer is that it stores data and information. And data is stored on the computer memory and other storage devices, such as your CDs, your hard drive, your flash drives. But what are data and information stored as? That's what we consider as the units of storage. So the units, they express the size of data and they help us visualize the amount of data that can be stored in any storage device. There are four different units of storage in computers. They are the bits, the nibble, the bytes, and word. Next, we're going to look at the values of these four different units of storage. The first is the bits, which stands for binary digits. Remember, the computer works with zeros and ones. It understands zeros and ones. And each of these digits is a bit. So the bit is considered the smallest unit of data. Next, we have the nibble. And the nibble is equal to four bits, meaning a combination of zeros and ones in any order. Four of the bits will give you one nibble. Next, we have the byte. The byte is made up of eight bits. So when you think of a byte, think of any alphabet or any number. For instance, A. It means A is made up of eight zeros and ones. That's why a byte is equal to eight bits. Consider another alphabet or number, two, seven. Each one is considered a byte and is made up of eight bits. And the final unit of storage we're considering is the word. The word is made up of 16 bits. It means a word is made up of how many bytes? Two bytes. Two bytes make a word and 16 bits make a word. So when you type, for instance, my name, how many words do we have there? We have my as a word, name as a word. And what's 
separate words, the space. So each word is equal to 16 bits. Now there is a tiny difference between a bit and a byte. A bit is considered the smallest unit of data. That's what the computer understands, zeros and ones. But a byte is considered the smallest unit of data that can be processed. Now, when you type on your keyboard, what do you use? You use alphabets, you use numbers, you type A, B, C, 7. These are what you typed, right? When you type, you send an input to the computer, which the computer processes, and then it displays the output on your screen. So when you type A, it's processed and you see A on your screen. So this is a byte, it can be processed. You do not see the ones and zeros that make up an A. Remember we said eight bits make a byte. The computer understands each individual bit. That's why it's called the smallest unit of data. But when we consider data that can be processed, it is the byte that is the smallest unit. So the bit is the smallest unit of data, while the byte is the smallest unit of data that can be processed. The key difference between the bit and the byte is the processing. So I earlier mentioned that eight bits will give you one byte. There are higher categories of bytes. For instance, we have terms like kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, and so on. Kilobytes are represented as KB. Now you can see that the B is in capital letter. Capital letter B is used to represent bytes. Whereas small letter B is used to represent bits. So there are instances, probably when you're browsing, where you see BPS. This B stands for bits per second, not the bytes. Capital letter B is used to represent bytes. Why small letter B is used to represent bits? And so kilobyte is represented as KB, megabyte is represented as MB, gigabyte is represented as GB, all caps, and terabyte is represented as TB. Now, because the computer works with binary digits, one kilobyte is represented as 1024 bytes. But for ease of calculation, we consider one kilobyte as 1000 bytes for ease of calculation how this is gotten the computer understands 2 raised to power 10 and this will give us 1024 bytes whereas we understand 10 raised to power 3 which is equal to 1000 so that's why for ease of calculation we represent one kilobyte as 1000 bytes, whereas the computer understands one kilobyte as 1024 bytes. And so when you think of kilobytes, you're thinking of thousands of bytes. Whenever you think of megabytes, you're thinking of millions of bytes. And then when you have gigabytes, you're thinking of billions of bytes. And terabytes talks about trillions of bytes. So you can see that these different storage units are of different capacity. The terabyte is bigger than the gigabyte. The gigabyte is bigger than the megabyte. And megabyte is bigger than the kilobyte. So next, we're going to see how to convert from one unit of storage to another. Remember the four units of storage you mentioned, the bits, nibble, bytes, and word. So if you're asked to convert from bits to word or from bits to bytes, what would you do? What if you're asked to convert from bytes to bits, what do you do? Now remember, so the bits is the smallest, followed by nibble, byte, and then word. So if you're converting from a small unit to a large unit, 
you divide. But if you're converting from a large unit to a smaller unit, you multiply. Let's see how this works with an example. So here's an example. How many bits are in 100 bytes? So what are you given? You're given bytes and you're asked to convert to bits. Okay, so we're given 100 bytes to convert to bits. Between bytes and bits, which is bigger? The bytes. So we're given a bigger unit to convert to a smaller unit. Following our rule, what do we do? Do we multiply or divide? We're going to multiply. So we know that one byte is equal to eight bits. This means that 100 bytes will be equal to eight times 100 bits. So 100 bytes will be equal to 800 bits. So our final answer is 800 bits. Next, we're going to look at three amazing terms. And you tell me what you think about them. The first is kilometer. The next is kilogram. And the final one is kilobyte. We've just described the kilobyte. But do you think there are differences between the kilobyte, the kilogram, and the kilometer? Are there similarities? Are there differences? What do you think? Let's find out. The kilometer, the kilobyte, and the kilogram are all units of measurement, but for different things. The kilometer is a unit of measurement for distance, whereas the kilogram is also a unit of measurement, but for weight. And the final one, the kilobyte, is a unit of measurement for memory space. And with this, we've come to the end of this lesson. But before we leave, let's have a quick recap. In this lesson, we learned that one of the characteristics of the computer is that it stores data and information. We also learned that data and information are stored on the computer memory or other storage devices in different units. We learned that the units of storage are bits, nibble, byte, and word. We also learned that a bit is the smallest storage unit. Going on, we also learned that the kilobyte means thousands of bytes. The megabyte means millions of bytes. The gigabyte means billions of bytes, while terabyte means trillions of bytes. And finally, we learned that Kilometer measures distance, kilogram measures weight, while kilobyte measures memory space. Let's look at some interesting exercises you should try out. Here's the first one. Now you answer this question. Which of the following is not a unit of storage? A. Bit. B. Nibble. C. Byte. D. Byte. The correct answer is C because byte is spelled B Y T E. Let's try out one more. How many bytes are in 10 kilobytes? A 10, B 100, C 1000, D 10,000. The correct answer is 10,000. How is it 10,000? So we're asked how many bytes are in 10 kilobytes. 
So we know that one kilobyte is equal to 1000 bytes. So 10 kilobytes is equal to 10 times 1000 bytes. It therefore means that 10 kilobytes is equal to 10,000 bytes, which is our final answer. And with this, we've come to the end of this lesson. So when next you have access to any storage device, always watch out for the unit of storage. It's usually written on the device. So we'll see you again in our next class. Bye.